Once upon a time, there were five Chinese brothers, and they all looked exactly alike. They lived with their mother in a house not far from the sea. The first Chinese brother could swallow the sea. The second Chinese brother had an iron neck. The third Chinese brother could stretch and stretch and stretch his body. The fourth Chinese brother could not be burned. And the fifth Chinese brother could hold his breath indefinitely. We all have talents, but when we bring these things together, we can create something truly extraordinary, just like in this story, The Five Chinese Brothers by Claire Hutchett Bishop and Kurt Wise. Every morning, the first Chinese brother would go fishing, and whatever the weather, he would always return to the village with beautiful and rare fish, which he could sell for a very good price. One day, as he was leaving the marketplace, a little boy stopped him and asked him if he could go fishing with him. No, it cannot be done. But the little boy begged and begged, please, please. And finally, the first Chinese brother consented under one condition, and that is, you must obey me promptly. Yes, yes. And so, early the next morning, the first Chinese brother and the little boy went down to the beach. Remember, you must obey me promptly. Yes, yes. And so the first Chinese brother swallowed the sea. And all the fish lay high and dry at the bottom of the sea, and all the treasures of the sea lay uncovered. The little boy was delighted. He ran here and there, stuffing his pockets with strings, pebbles, extraordinary cells, and fantastic algae. Near the shore, the first Chinese brother was collecting fish while holding the sea in his mouth. So presently, he grew tired. So he made a signal for the little boy to come back. The little boy saw him, but paid no attention to him. The first Chinese brother made great movements with his arms, and that meant, come back. <coughs> but did the little boy care? Not a bit. And he only ran further away. The first Chinese brother felt the sea swelling inside of him and made desperate gestures for the little boy to come back. <coughs> but the little boy only made faces at him and fled as fast as he could. The first Chinese brother held the sea until he felt like he was going to burst. Suddenly, the sea forced its way out of his mouth. <laughs> Went back to its bed, and the little boy disappeared. When the first Chinese brother returned to the village, he was arrested put in prison, tried and condemned to have his head cut off. On the morning of the execution, the first Chinese brother went to the judge and said, Your Honor, will you allow me to bid my mother goodbye? It is only fair. And so the first Chinese brother went home, and the second Chinese brother came back. Uh, everybody was assembled on the village square to witness the execution. The executioner took his sword and struck a mighty blow. Tink! 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 Tink, tink, tink. But the second Chinese brother only got up and he smiled, for he was the one with the iron neck, and they simply could not cut his head off. Everybody was angry, and they decided that he should be drowned. On the morning of the execution, the second Chinese brother went to the judge and said, Your Honor, will you allow me to bid my mother goodbye?
It is only fair. And so the second Chinese brother went home. And the third Chinese brother came back. He was pushed on a boat which made for the open sea. When they were far out on the ocean, he was thrown overboard. Yeah. Splash. But the third Chinese brother began to stretch and stretch and stretch his legs all the way down to the bottom of the ocean. And all the time, you could see a smiling face bobbing up and down on the crest of the waves. Everybody was even more angry, and they decided that he should be burned. On the morning of the execution, the third Chinese brother went to the judge and said, Your Honor, will you allow me to bid my mother goodbye? It is only fair. And so, the third Chinese brother went home, and the fourth Chinese brother came back. He was tied to a stake. Fire was set to it. But in the midst of the flames, they heard him say, this is quite pleasant. Everybody was getting even more angry by the minute. And they decided that he should be smothered. And of course, the fourth Chinese brother went home. And the fifth Chinese brother came back. A large brick oven had been built on the village square. And it was filled with whipped cream. Mm. He was shoved straight into the middle of it, and the oven was closed tightly. They were not going to be tricked again, and so they stayed there all night, and a little past dawn, just to be sure. But when they opened the door and pulled him out, that was a good sleep. Everybody stared open mouthed and round eyed. And so the judge stepped forward and said, We have tried every possible way to get rid of you. And somehow, it cannot be done. It must be that you were innocent. Yes, yes, the people cried. And so they let him go. And he went home. And the five Chinese brothers and their mother lived happily for many years.